Mike. All right, everybody. We are joined tonight on this very special podcast, a very musical podcast. It's actually December. It's the musical month of podcastering. <laughs> Uh, all the way into January, we've got all kinds of musical guests lined up. But this week, it is the Baltimore Video Game Orchestra and Choir. Uh, we've got virtually every single member, or at least three of them, on the uh, show tonight to talk about their upcoming uh, concert, virtual concert. But before we get into all of the nitty-gritty details, uh, why don't we go around the horn and introduce everybody. Carrie, you go first. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Carrie Wood, and I am the, uh, I guess, media manager for the Baltimore Gamer Symphony Orchestra, and I also play bass guitar in the orchestra. Uh, very good. Rob, go for it. Hello. Uh, so my name is Rob Glass. I'm the Enquirer part of the orchestra, um, and I am also our outreach manager. And Kira, go for it. Hey, my name is Kira Levitsky. I am the founder and now executive director of the group. I used to be uh, the conductor and... Yeah, moved on up a little bit. The Prezo Dent is here with us. <laughs> so uh, I guess you can all kind of chime in uh, in a cooperative fashion. Nobody likes it when people talk over one another. But how did this whole thing begin and when did it begin? Because I've been aware of the BGSO. Is, it that, is that the abbreviation? Okay. Uh, for about three years at this point, we've been meaning to do this interview since then almost. Uh, we... we, we we were in email chats to do this, I think, a month before COVID. I can't quite remember. It was very shortly beforehand uh, because, you know, when we used to do things in the real world uh, and then now we don't. So <laughs> that's why we're doing this right now. And uh, so somebody, please tell me how this whole thing started and how you got to where you are now. Um, so I moved to Baltimore in around uh, 2012, and I had been the conductor at the Gamer Symphony Orchestra of University of Maryland for five years. And I knew that there was nothing like that around here. Um, and when I actually started the group, you guys were actually the, one of the first people I, um, or first um, media presence I reached out to. And you actually were the first people to do a little article on us. I don't know if you recall oh, yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so you've known about it since we started, actually, like when we were having our first uh, rehearsals in my basement. And um, eventually we moved over to the Hack, which is the Hamilton Art, um, I think, Center, which is like a little teeny stage in this weird apartment complex looking thing. And then we ended up moving to my school. And eventually um, we uh, went to the Baltimore County um, Recreation and Parks and proposed that we become a program under them. Um, and they accepted us. And now we are fully uh, basically supported by the Baltimore County government, which is pretty awesome. You getting any uh, sweet, sweet grant money from them? Well, we get our um, rehearsal space and performance space completely free. And uh, also we get to use their 501c3 status. So we don't actually have to go through the process of being becoming a 501c3. Um, and they pretty much handle uh, a lot of the logistics and they will also um, communicate for us to the entirety of Baltimore County on our behalf, which is pretty sweet. Where do they set you up? Oh, we are. We're based out of the Sollers Point Multipurpose Center out in Dundalk. Um, and that's oh. our... That's our weekly sort of rehearsal space and has been sort of our home base for quite some time now. Um, we've typically hosted our performances there as well, but we're we're uh, we're pushing the capacity limits of uh, both the amount of people we can have on stage there as well as the amount of people we can have watching us in the room. So uh, we are fortunate that the county has some other venues that we're, I believe, starting to explore for this coming spring. Sounds like good problems to have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the next step is the Meyerhoff, right? Oh, man, that'd be great, right? <laughs> I, I actually went and saw a podcast of the Meyerhoff. So if, if they can do it, you can do it. All right. So uh, speaking of numbers, like how many members are you... Uh, performing with at this point and how many you know i mean I, yeah let's just go to that membership sure. how many people are playing instruments at any, at any given point in time and what kind of instruments because yes. i feel like give us with all video games <laughs> well but i feel like with video game music maybe you have to like 
bring out some weird stuff. <laughs> Any theremins? Not yet. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we have about, I would say, approximately 60, though I think. Uh, 59. 59. All right. Yeah. Uh, and we we host open houses um, every season to entice new people to come join us because we don't have any sort of membership fees. We don't audition people. We don't have any sort of limit on people to a part, um, which leads us to have some sort of some funky balances going on where it's like, cool, yeah, you know, we've got seven trombones just at any given time. And that's not something you would typically see in any other orchestra. <laughs> Yeah, but, and I've, I think since I've been there, so I started on clarinet, and there was just three of us, and now I think it's up to, like, there was seven at one point last year, and now we're back to three or four. I mean, I moved over to the choir, and we're about, I think we performed with 12 people, which for a choir of what we're doing, that's, like, the perfect size. Everything was really nicely balanced. Uh, we actually had some orchestra members come over and sing with us, too, depending on the piece, so... Yeah, it's really nice. I think the choir is very nicely balanced. You don't have too many weird things going on, like the seven trombones. And and you're an you're an alto, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> you know you you can tell, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, instrumentation wise, um, I mean, we have sort of your classic orchestral instruments. So we have we have our string section, we have brass, we have woodwinds. Um, we are fairly heavy on saxophones, which is somewhat unusual <laughs> for uh, orchestras. And then, as I mentioned, I play bass guitar. I'm actually one of two bass guitarists in the orchestra. Um, we typically either cover uh, like the contrabass part or another sort of low instrument that we maybe don't have readily available, like bassoon. Is, is the contrabass part different than the bass part in contra? <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing if we're doing contra the contra bass would be playing the bass part from contra i don't even know what that means extremely pleased great. to hear an orchestral version of the contra theme from the original contra that'd be amazing Contra's great <laughs> um but yeah i mean be a, a lot of what we do is um adapt um sort of your classic beeps and boops for <laughs> for orchestra uh but we do we do have we have piano we have synth available to us uh, we have a drum set in addition to your typical orchestral percussion, and we've got guitars. Yeah, so I don't know who does the compositions, or do you just like find them on the internet, or like so? How would you go about converting the Super Mario theme of Brian's virtual background, <laughs> you know, into like orchestra? <laughs> uh, so I'm actually on what we call our repertoire committee. Uh, I do a lot of the arranging for the orchestra, and I have, I think, two maybe three pieces on uh, this program that will be airing this weekend. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of what it is, is um, finding transcriptions. What's helpful with um, video game music specifically is it's very easy to find MIDI. Yeah. And so I can import a MIDI into uh, my arranging software and it will spit out all of the different stems in the MIDI. Mm. And then using that and using my existing music theory knowledge and chord theory and stuff like that, I am able to take something that was created for like an eight channel sound chip and expand it into 35 different pieces <laughs> or awesome. 35 different parts. So, yeah. So real and quick while I'm, not, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and when that's not available, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm ancient because I have no idea how to do any of that carry. So <laughs> I literally just, I literally just sit at the piano. I've, you know, I've done some arranging in my time and I literally just bang out the notes to try to figure out. And if it sounds good with the recording, I write it down and then I figure out the rhythms and the pitches that way. And, and um, I don't even bother looking up stuff on the internet because I don't know if it's right or if it's what I want it to be. And so, and, and it, it's a very laborious process. But you just basically keep listening to it on repeat, 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 and trying to play it, play it back. Which is yeah, convenient for, for some of the older video games because the music loops are like 42 seconds. Yeah, at most. <laughs> uh, we're also really fortunate. There's some folks who make their work available, um, you know, for, for free or, you know, you can subscribe to a Patreon or something and get access to it. Um, we've performed pieces from... Uh, a website called VGO Score or Video Game okay. Orchestra Score, uh, and that dude's great. 
And there's a lot of other folks online who make their work available to us. Um, we're also hardly one of the only, like, it's not like we're the only gaming orchestra oh, out right, there. Right. Um, there's a lot of other video game orchestras who okay. um, very willingly share their pieces and their work sort of between each other. But, but either way, I, I figure like the difference between the music from Legend of Zelda to like Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, I bet you you can go out and buy the sheet music if you if you wanted to, but maybe Zelda One, you're not going to be able to. You would think that it's actually the reverse. Um, Breath of the Wild has a really intense soundtrack. There's actually something like 360 something like tracks on that album or something like that. It's several nice. hundred. Um, finding sheet music for like retro stuff is actually pretty easy, um, particularly like piano scores and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I have to think like, you know, Mario Brothers works pretty good on a piano. <laughs> it's like seven notes. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, can you perform them for us on your MIDI keyboard that you have in front of you? Uh, please, I only use real, like, I was going to be my other question. How do you find a computer that uses real player to like play MIDI? Like, <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I use a I use a software called Finale. Um, there's also Sibelius, um, but there are several different types of arranging software out there that uh, that pretty easily import MIDI and will just spit out the notes and rhythms right for you. So, as good as any cell phone from 1998. Oh yeah, <laughs> love those chip tunes. But you you were mentioning that basically the the sort of video game orchestra community at large uh, is very sharing and caring. Uh, are you guys like? on various mega groups on the internet, like sharing uh, tips and tricks for, I don't know, which uh, which scores go best with which ones, you know, in terms of flow, music flow, music theory. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't have a music brain, but I guess uh, what I'm asking you is like how strong or loose is the, is the community at large? Uh, I would consider it to be pretty strong. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Virtual Video Game Orchestra, also known simply as VVGo, uh, which started in, during the onset of the pandemic, uh, just to sort of allow video game musicians to come together virtually. And uh, there's a lot of folks in there who do arranging. And I mean, I've had issues when I'm working on something for BGSO, uh, where I'll go in and be like, I'm hitting a roadblock. Does anyone have any ideas? And everyone's just super forthcoming and sharing of information. You know, we're, we're, we're all a bunch of nerds. We all want to do the same thing, which is, you know, arrange and perform video game music. Any, any hot goss in the video game music hot orchestra goss. world? Is anybody backstabbing anybody else? <laughs> no, I no, just, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know any of those people anyway? <laughs> no, I mean, for, for as long as I've been doing this, which, truthfully has really only been for about two or three years now um people have been really really chill no so. no divas on the french horn nah okay. <laughs> at uh, least not well, at least not in bgso <laughs> like oh, point yeah. dexter j ferguson we definitely reach out to each other um i'm on the leadership group so all the leaders of the the gsos are in a facebook group together and we awesome. actually will like reach out to each other and discuss like um if they're like you said you know is there any drama if there's a scandal going on Ooh. um i don't know if you know like uh, most recently there was um uh, a composer that was under the microscope for his behavior and, um, you know, we uh, collectively like came together as a community and we're like, we're not playing his music anymore. Oh, wow. And we all discussed it as, as leadership and, and sent emails to our group saying, hey, look, because of this behavior, we're not accepting, you know, we're not going to be playing that piece anymore. Unfortunately. Is, is it, was it like an important game? Like, like I said, you probably can't get away without playing uh, Zelda. You know, you got to play that. It wasn't the guy from Zelda, was it? It wasn't the guy from. No, like, it wasn't uh... Koji Kondo. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Sorry, because you know, you know the details better than me. If you if you want to. Sure. So the person who we're referring to is Jeremy Soul. Um, I've heard that name. Yes, you've heard that name because he's a fairly fairly big deal as far as um, video game composers is concerned, because he did all of the stuff in the Elder Scrolls from Morrowind on. So he's okay. he's the guy responsible for Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. He also did um, Guild Wars. He's done um, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, just 
Just a lot, oh, a so, lot of stuff, and some of the stuff that people want to hear. Yeah, so I, was, I he didn't mean, do Fortnite, did he? No. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Yeah. So Jeremy Soul, um, a few years ago was sort of outed as a bit of a, a bit of a predator. I think is yeah. the correct term for a it. A badman. Yeah. A not so great kind of guy. And uh, this was a guy who used the connections that he had within the industry to um, sort of blacklist women who didn't want to date him and stuff like that. Just real, real scumbag behavior, basically, to put it lightly. Um, uh, you know, I'm part of, I, I pay attention to the comic book world side of this kind of nerd. It's really tough when these guys like are legally scumbags, you, you know, like, they're not they're not doing anything against the law, but even still, everything about them makes you feel icky. Yeah. So when all of this stuff about Jeremy Soul came out, we um, I, I know I had discussed within BGSO leadership that um, I didn't feel super comfortable performing anything um, that had his name on it. And uh, I know the sort of GSO community at large sort of feels the same way about it. So. Yep. Yeah, that's got to well, up yours, you Jeremy Soul. Yeah, <laughs> when you can't uh, play the hits, uh, so to speak, especially like ones. Well, I mean, Skyrim now hitting ten years since release. The anniversary edition is out. Ever like the biggest selling video game of all time, I think at this point, compared to make maybe Tetris. I don't know, but like it's huge. it's up there. Yeah, uh, and the mod community is so strong, and whatever, just replace all the music with nothing but Macho Man uh, Randy Dragon sound effects. <laughs> we'll be fine i guess but uh yeah well, if, if if we had to drop some final fantasy soundtracks you'd be in big trouble uh here, here's a question i have are you guys video game nerds or are you music oh. nerds Ooh. uh everyone's everyone in the bgso is certainly both okay what, yeah, what are like, your like, I, favorite oh yeah go please yeah i can kind of talk about how i came to these guys so yeah uh carrie and i were actually at towson at the same time uh we didn't know each other at the time but um yeah there was probably about I would say what about half of our group is Towson grads right now, something like that. Yeah, yeah. A lot so, of so, folks. so someone barely knew him, you know, wasn't really great friends with him, but he kept posting about this, um, you know, this game orchestra. I think at that point, you guys were playing at the Creative Alliance. This would have been like 2015, 2016. Um, I had just moved back into Baltimore and I'm like, yeah, this is really cool. And so, I was trying to find a hobby basically after moving back, and so I finally uh made it to join in 2019 and i found out like wait there's people who know who these composers are there's people who like also understand music but like there's people i can be pokemon go friends with so <laughs> if you it's better if you're both we do definitely have some people who are just like hey we really like singing or we really like playing an instrument and this is a way to do it but i would say at least 70% of us are definitely both. And that's probably where we get most of our membership is people saying, wow, people that like both of my hobbies, I should really get, I should really uh, join this. Were you guys Towson marching band people? I was uh, not. Yeah, I was. Oh, do you know my friend Gary Williams? I've <laughs> like... known Gary Williams oh, wow. since I was 13 <laughs> years old. Wow. Uh, he, th he grew up three I, doors, three doors up for me. I not only, oh, then you're one of my neighbors too. Um, I oh. not only uh, was in the Towson marching band, I was in the Franklin High School marching band, too. Oh, Whoa. with Mr. Frazier? Absolutely. I did, <laughs> I did it for one year, and what a fucking scam that was. He was like, oh, <laughs> if you're going to take band, you got to be in the marching band. I was, you know, you shouldn't lie to 14-year-olds like that. You know, I should have been like, I'm just going to do the class. Yeah, I... <laughs> I went to Curly's and we were too uh, prestigious for a marching band until we decided yeah. to have a drum line my last year. <laughs> Well, Carrie, as soon as we're done, I'm going to talk, oh, talk to you for a couple minutes. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've played the Baltimore game. Yeah. <laughs> we, we played the Gwyn West Road game, which is weird enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hyper-local. Deacon Brook Circle, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do that after this record. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, now that we've already started to nerd out about, you know, our video game uh, preferences and, and how we came to enjoy these things, uh, I would like to go around the horn. Uh, talk about, I guess, what you're playing now, and then I guess your favorite video game music, either of now or or, or of all time. Because I only just recently bought a gaming laptop about a year ago. I was a lapsed gamer for about five years because I, I, I was running a business, and uh, you don't have time for that. 
and and then I was unemployed and then I didn't have any money. <laughs> so anyway, I just started catching up to things and I'm like playing Final Fantasy 15 right now, <laughs> which uh, if I'm going to do one complaint about that game, aside from the gameplay, the, the music is too jazzy. Because I'm running around fighting things and it's like... <laughs> Literally, that's what it sounds like to me. Uh, but yeah, so let's start with you, Carrie. Like, what are you playing now? What are your favorite soundtracks of now and forever? Sure. Um, currently, I am uh, playing the login screen for Final Fantasy XIV uh, because oh, yeah. <laughs> the queue times are forever. <laughs> Um, no, I've been playing, that's been sort of my game this year. Uh, I actually got into FF14 for the first time back in like June. Um, and I've somehow put in like 300 something hours since then, 325 hours according to Steam. Um, yeah, and that's great. And the music in that is great. Um, yeah, I love that. Uh, I'm other, otherwise I'm playing, um, Shin Megami Tensei 5 on Switch. That's my sort of single player experience right now. Uh, as far as all-time gaming soundtracks, um, Golden Sun is it for me. Golden Sun is my all-time favorite game. Period. Um, I love I love those three games so much. I have a I don't, large I don't know what Golden that is. Sun. It's an old Game Boy Advance RPG. <laughs> okay. I just decided she said Golden Eye and went with it. <laughs> hey, Golden Eye is great too. I, and Golden Eye, I know what that music things. sounds like. Right. Uh, yeah, the Golden Sun soundtrack and the entire Golden Sun experience is uh, I, some of my I favorites. feel like there's there's a whole level of gaming that happens right around the Game Boy Advance. Like, I was not a kid who bought a game if it had Japanese letters on it, but that's where I feel <laughs> like Game Boy Advance lives. Mm -hmm. You know, like, those those are the games that people like on it. A lot, lot of really high-quality JRPGs on the ga Game Boy Advance, for sure. So, yep, Go Golden Sun and its soundtrack are... Top tier for me. I'm gonna have to look that up because I, yeah, I, I never got into the advance or the 3ds or any of that stuff. I stopped at color because I'm old. I Rob, think we all got that fix? brick. Yeah, <laughs> you can kill someone with it. Rob, you're up next. Yeah, so I'm currently playing. Um, I just bought Pokemon. What is it? Shining Pearl? Is that what they're calling it? It's the remake of Diamond and Pearl uh, for the Switch. Um, switching that with, um, Life is Strange True Colors, uh, have not had a whole lot of time to actually play games right now because it's crunch time at work. Um, but yeah, my first gaming soundtrack memory was probably Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like every little fat kid, I absolutely love ska music and I can directly, <laughs> <laughs> I can directly quote, like, you know, playing Tony Hawk and hearing Superman for the first time is what did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time I really thought to myself, like, wow, games can be pretty cool. Like, they're not this thing just for nerds, like I usually think, even though I was totally playing them anyway. Um, but yeah, but I would say my favorite soundtrack of all time, uh, also to JRPGs, so Final Fantasy VIII for sure. Um And then my obscure favorite is definitely Shenmue for the Dreamcast. Okay. Um when we get to talking about the upcoming concert, I can tell you I reached out directly to Carrie's uh, compatriot, uh, Jacob, regarding how far we were getting in the repertoire and if we were going to hit Dreamcast so we could play that. As she's nodding her head, or uh, shaking her head. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Yeah. But no, really cool. It was really cool. Like, there's some cool jazzy stuff in there. There's some super traditional Chinese stuff. Like, it was the first time I listened to this. Listened to this like, wow, this sounds like a film score. This is really cool. And ever since, you know, I've tried to play that music wherever I can. I've recorded myself playing a couple of the piano pieces. Um, when I went to VGM Con in Minneapolis uh, early 2020, we actually played a couple of like jam sessions. But that was a really fun time. So it still means a lot to me, uh, even if I switch mostly to vocals at this point. So I'll still bust out the clarinet to play it or the piano. What was the uh, what was the tits and ass volleyball game? I liked when that, that was dead or that was dead or live, live beach volleyball. Beach volleyball. Extreme volleyball. Yes. <laughs> Change the breast yeah. physics slider. <laughs> yeah, I also, I also like the fighting game version. But yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. I remember that game. There was a bad movie that they made of Dead or uh, yes. Dead or Alive. It was dumb yeah. and bad. Pretty bad. Kira, same question. What's up? What's up? Um, ever <laughs> Taking your calls. <laughs> 
I would ever since I became a mom, um, the Xbox has just kind of been gathering dust, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I will always love playing uh, Katamari. It's one of my favorite mm. things to do. Um, I'll actually do the laundry that way because I'm so short and I have like five flights of stairs in my house. I will literally <laughs> just roll everything around and it will be awesome. Um, and I love Shadow of the Colossus. It was um, like one of my favorite games that, and I even arranged the music to it because oh. um, it's a, an amazing score. That game is basically um, an artwork. I mean, it's like a, yeah. Yeah. a legit work of art. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Keep but, going. Um, Oh, but I love, I also love Final Fantasy, mostly because of the weird experience that I had where I was at a uh, convention called MAGFest and I was oh, yeah. going, I was talking to my boyfriend at the time and I was talking to him about fi- like no- Nuovo Uematsu, who is the composer. And I kid you not, I turn my head <laughs> and we're in this revolving door, like, you know, like, like with the sections. And I'm like, no way, that's him. He was in the section in front of me. <laughs> like the computer was actually there with his posse and we're going and I'm staring at him and he's like, she's staring at me. Like I can tell he's talking in Japanese, like this weird little girl is like staring at me. And um, and then later on, one of my friends and I were going through the revolving door again. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I just saw Nuobu Uematsu and I kid you not, I turn again. He's in front of us again. That's it awesome. was like, it was... <laughs> But anyway, um, he actually, you know, um, listened to the the GSO sing uh, Promised Land for him in person. And it was such an amazing experience for him to do that and to listen to. Um, this is the the GSO in University of Maryland. And he did that at the at a convention. It was it was so beautiful just to see him listening to his own work being performed for him, too. So that was really cool. It is, can it's can I say. Oh, go, 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 no, go, 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 go. I was going to no. say what I was playing because it also has very good video game music. Uh, Fortnite was down for 24 hours <laughs> this weekend. So I downloaded the uh, Aladdin remaster on okay. the yes. Switch. And that's the Sega version of Aladdin. Fucking rips. Like, it's... <laughs> It's it so good. Like, oh, yeah, that animation is uh, yeah, like gorgeous, the too. It's, yeah. it, like, the Super Nintendo, no, it sucks. They just they, they make <laughs> up their own music. But the, 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 version, Genesis, the Genesis versions of both Aladdin and Lion King right? have much better soundtracks. Yeah. yeah. Disney, oh, Disney definitely played favorites there. Uh, and it's a fun game, too. Really hard. I, I was going to say, uh, to Kira's point, that the, it's it's always really nice when one of these creators is so gracious uh, and, you know, appreciates the fandom. Some of them can oh. be a little cranky. Uh, but as for me, I, I, I mean, I've, I, I just like the generic hits, you know, all the Final Fantasies and whatnot. But one of my favorite uh, video game soundtracks is from Contra 3. Uh, there is a, a final level theme right before you get to the last boss, which is just the head, you know, floating over you, dropping things on you. Uh, it just has a good thump and beat to it, and it's only it only plays when you're climbing up the wall to get to the last boss, and it's for literally a half screen. And I used to just get to that point, hang on the wall, and record the television with my tape recorder so I could wow. listen to it over and over and over. That's uh, dedication. Oh, yeah. No! <laughs> yeah. I used to tape record like the 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 music that would play before you get the master sword in uh uh, uh Zelda three, uh it's just this crescendo and then the ching and he holds it up and it, oh god I was awful, uh woo my favorite my favorite old one I, I'm, a, I'm a, I was a kid who liked L J N games no uh, no matter no matter how bad they well L J N's Back to the Future which takes the incredibly uh, memorable Back to the Future theme and just pretends like it doesn't exist. And it's like, and I'm like, it's been running through my head for 30 years at this point. It's, it's, it's not leaving anytime soon. Yeah. So I like the Pokemon theme so much. My first concert ever, I had a toy plastic piano that I got from a Santa's workshop in school and taught myself the Pokemon theme and forced my parents to sit in front of the TV and watch me play it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I found a five finger version of the of the Pokemon music. I'm like, hey, guess what? I'm gonna be a musician one day. And guess what, mom? Here I am, right now, actual musician. <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't gotta catch them all. It was no, like, that's oh, what it, it was. was. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it wasn't a Game Boy one. No. <laughs> it's the anime theme song. Oh, yeah. gotcha. 
<laughs> awesome. Awesome. Speaking of Pokemon anime, uh, did you guys, how far did you get? Are you still watching it today? Did you ever watch it? Because I was literally in college when that came out or became popular. And we were all just sitting around after class, like watching it. And we slowly found ourselves getting interested. And by the time uh, we were departing from college, my roommate had ordered like the banned episodes from Japan. The ones that gave kids seizures or had like uh, Team Rocket with gender swapped. And, and, and like, I, and then after, of course, you know, you, you start working after you get out of college, you have no time to do anything. Uh, so I kind of dropped. I'm, I'm off gonna show the... you something real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh, Carrie actually called them all. I, I have, <laughs> I have, what should be considered an illegal amount of Pikachu in my house. Okay. Um, yeah, I. Uh, That's. You should I was see my Star eight. Trek shelves. I was eight when, uh, when Pokemon first sort of hit in the United States. So I was like the prime age to get into it. Oh, I still sure. have all my old Pokemon cards. Um, I have Same. all my games. Did I, you get one of those tapes from Toys R Us that was like, hey, this cool thing is coming. It's going to be your favorite thing. And yeah, it turns out it was. <laughs> I did. And I don't know where that is because I think that's yeah. Really um, yeah, I have, um, I'm working on a Pokemon sleeve tattoos. No. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That VHS sounds like the equivalent of the Pizza Hut X-Men tape that tons oh, of kids sure. had. Okay, so, so at least the X-Men tape was actually the cartoon. This was literally, like, non-union actors that. pretending to be Ash's family telling you that you need to go help Ash by buying all the merchandise. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I think I think the weirdest piece of Pokemon merch that I have is is this. Oh, I am is, so jealous right now. Do not it's even. It's a keychain <laughs> from the short-lived Pokemon stage musical, oh. Pokemon Live. Um that's you're talking about license. You're talking about license. So, an stuff. official, an official. It's on YouTube. Show. It's wild. It's my favorite thing in the world. I love I, Pokemon Live. It's so. So cool. I'm not going to my basement to find it, but I have my Mecha Mewtwo card somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to rob you. If you, I'll trade you. Those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Carrie, we're the same age. We're close. We're close enough to the same age, and it was the same thing. Like it basically just popped out of nowhere one day, and we all had Game Boys. And you know, the big deal for a couple weeks was: are you buying red or buying blue? And I remember feeling personally betrayed uh, with the anime when they got rid of Brock and Misty. Like that was the first time I realized <laughs> right. the company. Yeah, the company does not care about me or my. It felt feelings. like going through a breakup. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I also remember crying at the Pikachu's goodbye song. Like Dude, when they pretend <laughs> to this day, I cannot listen to Pikachu's <laughs> goodbye without getting misty eyes. <laughs> I I came home from college one semester. My youngest sister had gotten Pokemon Blue, and I was like, "All right, I'll do this for the summer." And like, I played Pokemon, and that like that's the extent of it. Like, I was like, "I will do this. I will ride my bicycle around this crazy island. That's fine <laughs> by me." I found this. I found a fossilized shell. Cool. I still have my uh, Pokemon Gold in box. I just have to replace the battery. Uh, but yeah. All right. I think we've sufficiently nerded out <laughs> for the time being. Uh, now we've got to mosey along to the current production coming out. Uh, literally, as this uh, episode of the CTV show airs tomorrow, Saturday, there will be a, a live stream event. Well, a previously recorded live stream event on the YouTubes. Of your current production, which uh, I'm told all of the tracks are video games that are produced in the state of Maryland, which is fantastic because the state of Maryland has a shit ton of game houses. Uh, uh, oh, and you guys were previously mentioning. Uh, uh, oh, geez. So friend of the show, Tronster, works at Firaxis, is on the Civ 6 team. Uh, and I was saying before we started recording how awesome it would be if you guys could pull off the Civ 6 theme by uh, Christopher Tin, because it, it is a sweeping epic. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of music. Mm -hmm. my, my lord, when my girlfriend plays uh, Civ Six on her Switch, like I just, I, I, I get little pricklies on my um, arms listening to that sweeping choir and all the orchestrals. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's chat uh, briefly. Well, not briefly, as long as you want, for uh, this playlist. What's up with it? Tell us all about it, please. And how it uh, came to be. I'm gonna let Kira take this because this this whole Please theme do. was sort of her her idea. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
you know, going around and promoting your orchestra um, is like, you know, all really weird. And like, like you had to go to like bars and like these <laughs> weird like indie events and stuff like that and like meet people. Um, and I was just so shocked at how many video game developers there were. And then, you know, finding out of Firaxis is in my, you know, like right up the road and, um, you know, obviously Bethesda, you know, ding, oh, that's actually in Bethesda, cool. Um, so I would, you know, be talking to these people and I'd be like, oh, you know, maybe we can play the music from their game, from your game. And they're like, oh yeah, that would be so sweet. And um, eventually I, I was, you know, just kind of talking and I went, you know, maybe we could actually pull this off because I'm seeing so many, diff you know, I'm learning about so many different um, game developers that are in Maryland. And, you know, I'm talking to these people as I go to these different events and they are super interested in being involved. Um, the guy that made uh, Flutter Bombs, um, he, you know, he's super stoked as well as the composer um, to be involved. Squirrely Roo uh, met them at a local event and they are super, you know, excited and very, very um you know, eager to, to participate. Um, and I think it all, we also kind of wanted to bring attention to those game companies and support, I mean, local businesses in a sense. Um, you know, you know it, it, it can be daunting when you are up against, you know, I don't want to say their competition, but Nintendo, you know, everybody knows Nintendo without, right. without, you know, um, but if you go and you're like, oh yeah, did you play that game by Firaxis? And someone's like, Firaxis? What? What's that you know like you know um so i i think we really just i really just wanted to um sh shine a spotlight on maryland you know because we we obviously love ourselves so much we wear our flag like it's nothing <laughs> we old bay on everything like i literally went to florida because my mom moved to florida and i got fries and i got super mad and the late the waiter's like is everything okay i was like there's no old bay She's like, honey, you're in Florida. I was like, oh, yeah. Sorry about that. But <laughs> <I'm> anyway. <a vinegar laughs> <writer. laughs> Don't apologize for that. Yeah. I'm actually wearing, I'm actually wearing a Baltimore <laughs> <Yeah>. bench right <laughs> now. <laughs> so, an so. Orioles and, hoodie on. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and there's these, these and, and also there's like these sections of the grocery store where it's like made in Maryland or there's like made in Maryland stores or made in Baltimore stores that are around. And I was like, okay, well, why don't we do that too? But with video so, yeah, I think yeah, you bring up a good point is that everybody is aware of, you know, the big the big guys like you know, EA, Activision, Blizzard, uh, Nintendo, Sega, blah, blah, blah. But and, and in my mind, like Bethesda is every bit as big as them because they have such flagship properties. And even I didn't even realize that ZeniMax was the one who was in charge of uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I started listening to like interviews with these. I'm going to call them bigwigs. I mean, they're talking to people who. Well, speaking of music, we're the music developers for like Diablo one and two. Uh, but a lot of these uh, th journeys that these people go on, like they start out at Microprose and then they go to this and then they go to that. And then, and, and but it's so many of these people start out in Maryland um, that, yeah, I think it, it needs to be brought up and it needs to be showcased for show. Um, but as far as this uh, particular um, arrangement is uh, concerned, can you give us some, some hits, uh, give us a couple of tracks? Sure, I've actually got the set list right in front oh, of me. There you go, um, there you go. I mean, we we are we are opening big with a big Bethesda title. We are opening with the uh title theme from Fallout 4. Okay. Um but then on we my move list into, to catch yeah, up. Yeah. Great game. I really enjoyed Fallout 4. Um we uh we've got Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, which I feel like people more closely associate with Rhode Island because of everything yep. that happened with 38 Studios, but Kingdoms of Amalur was actually co-developed locally by the folks at Big Huge Games, which is located in Timonium. Um, <laughs> I got, literally just uh, watched a YouTube video about this yesterday. It's about how, wild. It's wild. Everything about that. that happened with that game is so unfortunate because the, the guy from fabulous. The, what was his name? The guy from the Pirates that owned the company that just kept getting money, like dumped. Uh, on it this was the game. guy from the Red Sox, and it oh, was the Red Kurt Sox. Kurt Schilling. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Kurt Schilling, yeah. Oh yeah, Kurt Schilling sucks. Yeah. He okay, you got to send me this video. I'm super curious now. It's it's uh, a, a, the video series is called What Happened, and it, it's easy to find. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the state of Rhode Island was on the hook for like tens of millions of dollars so that this <laughs> game could come out. 
<laughs> and it finally did and it didn't make enough money <laughs> yeah it's unfortunate kingdoms uh released very shortly after skyrim came out it was just right. sort of overshadowed in a big way yep. uh, but yeah it's uh it's cool the composer grant kirkhope who i think is best known for his work on uh banjo kazooie and goldeneye uh he did the score for kingdoms of amalur and he provided us with a really cool video intro for this show for us um we've donkey got kong. yeah he did he did donkey kong 64 and some yep. other donkey kong stuff as well i um, quit playing donkey kong 64 when i had to actually play donkey kong in game and i was like <laughs> this is too fucking hard and i don't want to do it anymore. oh when you got past the title screen in the rap yeah i was gonna say yeah. is the is the rap <laughs> in the uh in the 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 lineup this no because <laughs> rare is not located in maryland come on cranky um, take it to the fridge We've got uh, we've got the <laughs> local indies that Kira mentioned, Flutter Bombs and Squirrely Roo Rabbit, which is great. Um, it was really cool to be able to work with those folks to uh, spotlight their work and their their games. Uh, then we've got the stuff from Firaxis. So we've got Civilization four, five, and six Ooh. pieces, um, and our big Elder Scrolls piece. Due to the actions of Jeremy Soul, we were not going to do anything from oh. Skyrim. So instead, we go back and we dig into the history of Bethesda Softworks and we visit a little Daggerfall. game called Daggerfall. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember that game having music. <laughs> yeah, it, it has a, a really lush score um, by Eric Heberling, who uh, was really kind to provide us with the score for this orchestral suite of oh, Daggerfall wow. music that he had arranged. And uh, the end result is really delightful. Uh, it's It was fun to go back really, again, into the history of Bethesda to be able to showcase an older game like Daggerfall. And uh, then again, to be able to highlight the newer stuff from them, such as Fallout 4. So. Yeah, Daggerfall for me was uh, the biggest game I had ever played in my life. Like It's the was... biggest game anyone's ever uh, played. It's still the largest map in any single game that's ever been published. Very crazily ahead of its time with all the procedurally generated dungeons that were always broken. Like you would get <laughs> lost <Yeah>. immediately, <laughs> just fucking lost, fall into a ravine and get killed by a skeleton. I mean, it's Bethesda. They they have a they have a thing for that, <laughs> right? We love them, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, I love them dearly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, we've got some really cool stuff. We've got XCOM. Uh, we have a fault. What we're calling our Fallout Radio medley. So we're doing okay. a little bit of jazz. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, a, and then uh, choir is actually doing two uh, pieces for the radio medley. So. Called Made in Maryland, but we're doing Country Roads by John Denver because uh, that because that shows <laughs> Cause up that in the was radio. Fallout seventy six. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, uh, let's almost see, we're doing that. We had a quartet do. Uh, I don't want to set the world on fire. Um, we're doing the Nuka World theme. I don't know if that's part of the medley or not, but yeah. It's not. No, the, the Nuka World theme song jingle. Uh, that That's one of my arrangements on the show. Um, okay. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. It's a hokey theme park so jingle much with fun. some genuinely hilarious lyrics. Yeah, so. it's so much fun. I got to go in the super deep bass for that. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're, we're also doing backup vocals for, well, okay, so some of the songs are doing backup vocals like um, Flutter Bombs, but then obviously Civ 4, we're not doing Baba Yetu without the lyrics to Baba Yetu. And we had a amazing 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 soloist who's actually usually one of our food, uh, flute players and they did such a bang up job well i'm gonna watch the stream so please tell us uh <laughs> when and where we can find it you can head on over to youtube.com slash baltimore gso and find us on december 11th at 3 p.m eastern the show is about an hour and a half long oh sweet okay well, I was going to say, uh, send me a link ahead of time so I can put it in the show notes for this episode of the CTB show. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, it's been fantastic speaking with you. Uh, we're going to have to do it again next time you have a production to speak about so that we can just get all the semantics out of the way and just start nerding out for a yeah, that's solid a lot of 40 fun. minutes and then get to the playlist and peace out. I haven't done a podcast in like two years. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Yeah, I thank really you. Thank it. you so much. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for stopping by. Uh, we will uh, see you next time.